Hey, bada bing, bada boom. The Many Saints of Newark takes us back to North Jersey for some good old fashioned cold blooded killing and some good old fashioned hot plates of sausage. Directed by Alan Taylor, this Sopranos prequel is less about the rise of Tony Soprano and more about the fall of Dickie Moltisanti. And we'll break all of that down. Plus, we finally learn who is behind one of the most legendary killings in the Sopranos universe and how that stacks up against what we already knew. But before we get to all of that, I have to warn you, we are about to go full spoiler mode on Many Saints of Newark. So if you haven't seen it yet or you don't want to know, now would be the perfect time for an abrupt cut to black. Five dollars says I spot him first. I don't got five dollars. You better win, blue boots. <laughs> Okay, now that we're past the spoiler warning, let's get right to that ending. Dickie Moltisanti is the father to Christopher, the same Christopher who opens the movie with a voiceover from beyond the grave since we know Tony killed him in The Sopranos. Anyway, Dickie is the main character of this movie and the whole thing all ends with his murder. Now, we've heard accounts of Dickie slaying before, but there was always a bit of mystery there. Who ordered the hit on Dickie and why? Well, it was Junior all along because Dickie made fun of him. Well, kind of a few times actually, I mean, Come on, he's junior, he's constantly falling down at stuff, and Dickie was a bit of a ball breaker, and you know, it doesn't exactly mix well with Junior's petty and vindictive persona. So anyway, after we get the shot of Dickie being gunned down in his own driveway, we see Junior pop into a phone booth in the middle of the night, and a voice yeah. on the other end says, It's done. This confirmation shed new light on a story we already partially knew in season four. Tony told Christopher a version of the story to get him to kill Barry Haydu, a retired cop, and in Tony's version of the story, Haydu killed Dickie at the direction of rival wise guy Jilly Ruffalo, who according to the in-show legend, allegedly killed Dickie's prison cellmate. And because no good deed goes unpunished, Dickie gouged out Jilly's eyeball in retaliation. Or so the story goes. The thing is, we still don't know if Tony ever knew the real story behind Dickie's murder or if he sent Christopher to kill Barry Haydu for some other reason. The Many Saints ending may shed light on who ultimately killed Dickie, but it doesn't clear that mystery up. If anything, it makes it worse. We spoke with the cast of Many Saints of Newark, and here's what Alessandro Nivola, the actor who plays Dickie, had to say about it. Well, David really set me free because he, he told me when we were starting filming that no, I shouldn't pay any attention to anything anybody in the series had ever said about Dickie Moltisanti because they're all liars. So I felt like I really only needed to, you know, look look to the script for, for answers uh, and clues to the character. Um, the, the big one being that uh, this guy was someone whose violence uh, were all crimes of passion, as opposed to like cold, uh, calculated mob hits. They were uh, eruptions of, of rage that, that um, you know, are, are emotional. And that is really, you know, something that he has a, a hard time understanding about himself. He's really just sort of trying to find a way out of the, the cycle of violence of, of his upbringing, his childhood. and instead just ends up being the, the architect of his own destruction. Yeah, these are like characters that people know already and the danger is that it will be either disconnected from what they know or it'll be too much uh, like an impression of that person or something. And so uh, the way I talked to the actors was to say, you know, imagine you're playing a historical figure and, and you don't have to imitate them, but just, you know, what's your take on that historical figure? I am alone so much. I get lonely. I'm a native, I'm Italian, so I, I was, they chose me because of that. Um, and I brought my Italian uh, part <laughs> in, the, in the movie and um, uh, I tried because I didn't speak English when I got the part. Uh, I mean, I spoke English, but it's been hard to read the script, to understand, you know, the, the director sometimes and I mixed my emotions being in America for the first time in my life uh, with the character, which is similar. So you better see. Now, while Many Saints of Newark focuses more on Dickie's personal relationships than it does in the Mafia stuff, it does take us back to the area of New Jersey that fans got introduced to during six seasons of The Sopranos, and also, weirdly, the exact part of the country where I grew up as a pasta-eating Italian-American who luckily had very few murderous Mafia members in my family. Or, at least I thought. 
I mean, who knows how many of my uncles sent some dude, you know, swimming in the East River if you catch my drift. Weirdly enough, one thing I did see thousands of times growing up in New Jersey was the Soprano Strip Club Bada Bings, or as we actually knew it, uh, Satin Dolls. I've never actually been inside because something about an all-you-can-eat shrimp buffet sign being outside of a strip club keeps me from wanting to visit personally, but I did always think it was hilarious that it was roughly 30 feet from a children's birthday party supply store called Party City. New Jersey works in strange and mysterious ways. You don't want to know what this candle smells like. Oof. Anyway, Ray Liotta, a legend among fans of gangster movies, actually reached out to Sopranos creator David Chase once he heard Chase was returning to the streets of North Jersey for this prequel. I, I came and wanted to be a part of it. I had met David Chase years before for another part. Uh, it, it just wasn't the right thing at that time. Um, so I really, really wanted to work with David again. And when I heard that they were doing a movie or that there was a script for it, I was hoping to, you know, that maybe, yeah, let's get Ray, but it wasn't. So I just said, let's get David. And I, I flew myself out to here in New York so I could sit down and have lunch with him and, and Alan Taylor, the director. And luckily the, the lunch went, went well, or maybe it's because I paid for it. Uh, but I got, I, I got this part. I got, it was, a, I went after it. Now, he wouldn't speak to it in the interview, but Leota actually plays two characters in this film. First, he plays Hollywood Dick Moltisanti, Dickie's father, and they have a really great relationship. All right, maybe not. After young Dickie kills Hollywood Dick with his own frickin' steering wheel and then torches the body to hide the evidence, he later connects with Leota's second character and Dickie's uncle, Sally Moltisanti, who's doing a bid for killing a made guy. I'm here for a good reason. You don't need to help me. What do you want, Richard? I want to do a good deed. You know, if there's something that keeps the audience, uh, you know, caring about him, even as he does quite monstrous things along the way, um, it's just his growing realization that, that he has destroyed everything that he loves and that, you know, there's kind of nothing left of him by, by the end of the movie. This decides me. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop my own book. Many Saints also focuses on the story of a character named Harold McBrayer, played by Leslie Odom Jr. Harold starts out as an associate of Dickies and winds up being something of a rival, building his own criminal organization against the backdrop of the 1967 Newark riots. Harold, on the page anyway, uh, the. I got so much from David's writing, but what I got to add was, you know, that that history, that backstory that might have brought him to the place uh, that, that we that we meet him. And I thought a lot about my grandfather and uh, the other six million black people that migrated from the south to the north between 1910 to about 1970, really looking to cut themselves off from the plantation economy and make a better life for themselves and for the children. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to put as much uh, of the truth of what I know about that experience, um, just put as much of, of that on the screen as, as possible. McBrayer doesn't directly connect back to the future Sopranos that we know, but we might get more of his character of HBO and David Chase continue to tell Soprano stories. And since we're on the topic, it seems as if more Sopranos could be on the horizon. HBO just inked a new five-year deal with David Chase, which almost guarantees more series or movies about the North Jersey mob, which is cool because if you tuned into many scenes hoping to see the rise of Tony Soprano, well, you may have been a little disappointed. Michael Gandolfini does a great job playing a younger version of his father's iconic character, but Many Saints is very much Dickie Moltisanti's movie, despite the end of the film centering on Tony's decision to follow his uncle's example to get involved in the family business. So there's a lot of living that happens before this and this. And if you're wondering where David Chase would go next in a story about The Sopranos, well, this is a pretty good bet. This Tony is such a different Tony. I, and I think a lot of people sort of expect him to be this gun wielding sort of like mobster and he's cool, but he, he's like kind of nerdy and he's got long hair and, um, you know, he's got his big bell bottoms. And I think it's, it's, it's an honest depiction of sort of a young kid growing up without 
sort of a family, you know, and he leans on Dickie. He, he just wants to have someone there, someone to watch his football games and hear about his school drama. And he, he doesn't really have anyone. And I think he sort of gets whittled down because of his his trauma and his family to to sort of become resentful and and you know angry and and kind of gets hard in it okay time to run down some easter eggs that we found and really the whole point of this movie seemed to be bringing back places that were famous in the sopranos lots of sopranos landmarks like satrielli's and holston's will all make appearances but here were a few other easter eggs and callbacks that we noticed in season five tony's cousin tony blondetto tells a story of hijacking an ice cream truck just to give the ice cream away to kids in the neighborhood we got to see that take place along with a young tony b and man that must have been a blast Speaking of younger Sopranos characters, a young Artie Bucco makes an appearance a few decades before Tony does him a favor by blowing up his restaurant. Oh! oh. Ah, your sister's Easy, Junior. Jeez, you kiss your mother with that mouth? Anyway, Junior's colorful outburst after he slipped and hurt his back is just foreshadowing for when he does the exact same thing later on in life. Your sister's we also get a new version of the carousel poker game where Johnny Boy Soprano and crew got scooped up at the beginning of the Newark riots. We saw this same scene in flashback form in season one, episode seven. And of course, a little bit earlier, we mentioned that Ray Liotta plays two characters, but actually, I need glasses for that. Actually, he plays three characters technically. So hear me out. In season two, when Christopher is flirting with the idea of writing movies, instead of being a gangster, he specifically references Goodfellas as his inspiration. And Tony references Goodfellas protagonist, Henry Hill, in season one. So who is Henry Hill played by? Well, Ray Liotta. So that means he plays Hollywood Dick and Sally Moltisanti, plus he's actually Ray Liotta playing Henry Hill. Bonus, don't forget that in Goodfellas, Henry Hill's wife is played by Lorraine Bracco, who we know as Dr. Jennifer Melfi. Actually, there are a ton of Goodfellas actors in The Sopranos, like Dr. Melfi, actor Ray Liotta, Pauly, Big Pussy, Larry Boy Boris, Beansy Gaeta, the list goes on and on. Anyway, what did you think of The Many Saints in Newark, and did Tony ever really know the real story behind Dickie's death? And where do you hope The Sopranos will go next? Let us hear your best theories in the comments. Thanks for watching this episode of Cannon Fodder. And for more Sopranos, check out our full review on The Many Saints of Newark. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch IGN. And for a great pizza, head out to Anthony Franco's in Paramus, New Jersey. Oh!